So what I'm doing here, I've got the accelerometer hooked up to the computer in the back. And I'm going to just set this thing down if I can do it, so that you can see the display here. Okay, so I've got four readings here. I've got the um, high-res acceleration and braking. I mean, it goes up to plus 0.72 and minus 0.6. Uh, and I've got uh, three significant digits, well, uh, three and a half, I guess, uh, four digits for that. And then I've got one less digit for the regular X, Y, Z. So Excel braking, left-right cornering, and vertical calibration. Vertical just tells me whether or not the car is pitching a lot, and I can cut, I can correct the net vector if they, if I've got a lot of body roll or the, the car is not not um, vertical. So um, that's useful. Anyway, so let me just show you. So we'll do cornering first. I'm going to turn the sensor sideways one way, minus 1G cornering to the left, and then I'll turn to the right, plus 1G to the right. So nice and stable numbers. And then acceleration, um, take it up. I see it stops at 0 0.7, approximately 0 0.71. And then on the lower res, I can take it up to 1G. It'll actually measure up to one and a half, but that's all I've got. It's gravity to work with, and the opposite way, I can bring it down to minus one g, and again, it'll bottom out on the other side, just under 0.6. But uh, for acceleration purposes, I'm not going to pull in second gear more than 0.7 g's. So I'm, uh, I mean, I might with the nitrous on actually, but um, that would be great. But I'll just switch to third gear if I don't have enough resolution. So if I just let this thing set, uh, come on, just stay still. You can see that there's very little jitter in the system. I've got less than, um, you know, far, far less than 1%, maybe half a percent jitter. Now, I may end up with more jitter, vibration, and electrical noise getting in the way when the car is running. So we'll just have to, have to see. And let's say the vertical sensor, if I flip the thing right upside down, I'll get negative 1G. Um, on the vertical sensor. So all, all the software is configured. I'll just pull the camera back out just to show you what I do. So I'll go offline again and go into the inputs and then I'll go to say the cornering G's and um, let me just scan down. So what I've got here is a table and basically the table is the input voltage and then the output G's and I can vary the offset and the gain of the system until I get it calibrated and using gravity at 1.00 G's that's the way I calibrate all three axes and then, then we're good to go so the system's working really nicely I just hope I don't get too much noise in the system from vibration and, and um, electrical noise um, when I'm, I'm going to mount this using a um, just on velcro tabs um, so I'll have a, a, a plate that I can adjust in two axes to get um, the thing absolutely level. And then I can also use Velcro as a, just a shock absorber. Uh, and there's also electrical low-pass filtering there, 25 hertz low-pass filtering to um, dampen the signal a little bit. And I can smooth it in software too. All right, here we go. I changed the pads. Uh, to the E pads from the BP10s here for my street use and uh, very easy to remove on the well woods you just lift this um, up and then pull it out and then the pads can slide in and out so really nice as you can see the brake fluid is dissolved off the uh, the lettering so it's kind of funny that a brake company would <laughs> not have uh, lettering that was uh, brake uh, fluid proof so here's the uh, Speedway sourced, uh, it's a Del is it Deltro, Del Deltron, it's the a hydraulic fitting um, used as a, uh, it's got a sort of a check valve, not fully a check valve, but it's it, it's a, it marketed as a, a proportion valve, it can, can get turned all the way off, and it's positioned uh, further forward than I thought I was going to do, so there's the front of the car and the line is here and as you travel down towards the back it splits here, there's a Y here 
and then it splits to the two sides. So uh, it's fine. I can just reach into the car and you know turn turn the knob. And uh, so I'll have it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll I'll put the pressure testing um, gauge back on the rear lines, and I'll crank on the brakes and because I have to bleed them anyway now that this is in and then I'll see what the uh, I'll set it at 450 I think PSI to the rears when the fronts are maxed out so um, so if the fronts are at a thousand I want it to be around 450 uh, thousand to 1500 at the front um, the other thing is uh, this is just a nasty job because you cut the line with the uh, the line cutter and then all of a sudden there's just fluid pouring out and you're working on flaring the lines uh, when you're just getting drenched in brake fluid, so it would have been better if the lines were dry, but my lines were full of fluid, so nasty, nasty stuff. I've had to change my shirt and wash everything because I've just been covered in brake fluid, dripping all over me, so lots of fun, but at least it's done now, so looking forward to bleeding the lines and doing the pressure testing. And yes, the new 25.4 millimeter front master cylinder is all in and all that stuff, so it's really nice and firm already, but I gotta bleed the lines and then do some testing on it. So I got these 10.8 um, uh, grade uh, or 10.9 grade uh, studs and mounted them with some Loctite. And then these are these tuner nuts, and they're long, so they're just a little easier to take on and off at the racetrack when you're fiddling quickly. Um, they stick out a little bit from the edge of the, um, the stock wheels, but they are um, just a nicer Gorilla hardware, very expensive, but worth it, I think. Um, they're conical seat, so uh, which work with my racing wheels with the slicks, and then I've got these conical to um, ball seat adapters uh, for uh, the snowflakes. So. Um, should be good because I have to switch to the studs for the, the new axles and um, they're long studs so I gotta have these open-ended nuts and I don't have a lot of options. So this is what I've gone with. Okay, brake test completed. Um, and I was right the very very first time when the proportioning valve is set at full minimum the rears will only go to 600 um, with the Willwood valve. So turn turn the valve all the way down and instead of having 14-1500 PSI you can get it down to as low as 600. But that's too much. It'll lock up the rears. So the other valve you can turn it all the way to zero. It has a strange effect though. When you when you turn the valve almost all the way off that's when like it's in the last sort of half turn of the five turns that it uh, does all of its magic so it's fairly sensitive and you basically get to a point where um, I get it so that it'll peak at 500 instead of 600 which is kind of a good starting point for me and it takes about one second for it to, to reach pressure so it's got a, a damping effect on the rears um, so you stab the fronts the fronts immediately respond the rears kind of go they come up sort of from 0 to 500 sort of like about, about one second so you know, um, we'll give it a whirl, we'll get this car on the road with snow should be gone in a couple more days and uh, by next week I should be able to drive it again and uh, the temperatures are warming up and then um, we'll start doing some, 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 some detailed braking tests and then I can also get the, um, the axles, uh, the front axles, uh, racing axles put on, so good. So there are the um, tuner nuts, the Gorilla nuts. They do stick out a little bit, but um, they're a lot easier to put on because you can just get your finger on them and just ch -ch 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 -ch. so I like them. I think they look fine, and uh, they're they're subtle, so it's good. So it's with the braking system done. How does the pedal feel? So when I put my foot on the pedal now with no vacuum assistant assist, it doesn't even go down a quarter of an inch before it's rock solid. Like it's it's firm, and I can, if I push on it, I can get 500 pounds of pressure on the brake lines at the front. Um, so it is possible to brake the car fairly aggressively, I guess. But um, yeah, that 25 millimeter master cylinder, uh, boy, I tell you, it's like boom. It's like it's um, it's much it's much uh, firmer than uh, 
the uh, 22.2. And then Helan towing, you can't see, unfortunately, really the angle, but um, I can, I, I've got a much better angle for my foot, which is what I was hoping for. So I'll, I'll, I'll turn on the, um, that's the vacuum pump. And the brake's now got more movement to it. And um, it feels, uh, it still feels nice and firm. So it'll be interesting to see when the car's on the road, how, how, it, how it feels. So if I turn the vacuum, I've got the vacuum adjustable here on the computer. If I turn that vacuum all the way up, so it's maximum, uh, you know, it's factory vacuum basically, then the pedal's still really awesome. It still really only travels uh, an inch maybe for for maybe an inch and a half for, for maximum pressure. And uh, so that gives me the ability to uh, blip the throttle, trailing, you know, like the... Uh, shifting in the corner so I can twist my foot and go blip, 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 and uh, it'll be good. So, yeah, I'm pretty uh, pretty uh, excited. I think this is uh, going to be a big improvement, and uh, we'll find out uh, a week in a bit, I guess.